Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you about exponential equations, and then we're going to do some application problems with them. Now, an exponential equation will be any equation that has an exponent in it, and we can use these exponents to our benefit with the equivalence property. This says that if we have the variables b, x, and y that are real numbers, and b is positive and not equal to 1, then if we have two exponents that are equal to each other, and they have the exact same base, b, then the value of those exponents here, x and y, would be equal. Let's look at two examples. The first, we have 4 to the power of 2x minus 3, and it's equal to 64. Well, recall that 64 is the same as 4 to the power of 3. So rewrite that left-hand side. Now you can see that the left side and the right side both have exponents, and they both have bases of 4. That means we can use that equivalence property and set those exponents, 2x minus 3, equal to each other, equals 3. Now we can just solve for x. Add 3 to both sides. We have 2x equals 6. Divide by 2, and we have x equals 3. Let's look at example 2. Here, notice that we have an exponential expression on each side of the equal sign, but the bases aren't the same. On the left, the base is 27, and on the right, the base is 1 third. Well, recall that 27 is equivalent to 3 cubed. Well, how do we get 1 third? Well, 1 third would be the same as 3 to the power of negative 1. So we can use all of this together, and 1 third to the power of negative 3 would give us 27. So we can replace our base of 27 with 1 third to the power of negative 3. And we still have that initial exponent of 2w plus 5. And this is equal to 1 third to the exponent of 2 minus 5w. Now we can set those exponents equal to each other. On the left, I'm going to distribute the negative 3 through the parentheses. So we'll have negative 6w minus 15 equals the exponent on the right, 2 minus 5w. We'll add 6w to both sides. And we have negative 15 equals 2 plus a w. Subtract 2 from both sides, and we get w equals negative 17. Now, if you remember, exponents and logarithms are inverses of each other. So we can also solve ex exponential equations by using logarithms. In the next examples, we're going to use these four steps to help us solve exponential equations with logarithms. Let's start with example three. Five to the power of x equals 83. The first step is to isolate the exponential expression on one side. That's already done for us. The second step is to take the log with the same base on both sides of the equation. So we're gonna take the log of five x on the left and the log of 83 on the right. Remember, as long as we're doing the same thing to both sides, we keep that equal. Now we can use the power property of logs, which tells us this exponent x gets multiplied by the log of 5. And that equals the log of 83. Now we can divide both sides by log of 5 and that will isolate that x on the left-hand side. So we get x equals the log of 83 divided by the log of 5. And we'll put that as a solution set. Okay, let's look at example 4. Here you see that our exponential expression isn't isolated. 
it has 700 in front of it. So first, we want to divide both sides by that 700. On the left, we'll have 1 7th. And on the right, we have e to this exponent, negative 0.2 k. Now, we'll go to step two, where we take the log with the same base of both sides. Here we want to use natural log because we have that irrational number e. So we'll take the natural log of the left, and that equals the natural log of everything on the right. Now remember when you take the natural log of the base e, you are left with just the exponent. So the left side is the natural log of 1 7th, and on the right, we just have that exponent, negative 0.2k. Now we need to isolate our k, so we'll divide both sides by this negative 0.2. You see we'll have k equals the natural log of 1 7th divided by negative 0 0.2. Well, we can use the quotient property on this natural log of 1 7th, which tells us to take the natural log of 1 and subtract the natural log of 7. And we can keep on simplifying. The natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So we have 0 minus the natural log of 7 divided by negative 0.2. That simplifies to negative natural log of 7 divided by negative 0 0.2. Those negatives will simplify out. So we have the natural log of 7 divided by 0 0.2. And again, put that in a solution set as your final answer. Now look at this example, 5. We have an exponent on each side of the equal sign, but the bases are not the same. First step is to isolate the exponents. Those exponential expressions are isolated, so let's take the log of each side. We'll have the log of 3 to the 5x minus 6 equals log of 2 to the power 4x plus 1. Now we'll use that exponent property, or the power property, for logs. So that exponent gets multiplied in front of the log of the base on both sides. Don't forget those parentheses, because that exponent has multiple terms. Okay, remember our goal here is to isolate x. Well, x is inside parentheses on both sides and multiplied by all these things. So we're going to first distribute. On the left, we'll have 5x log 3 minus 6 log 3. On the right, we'll have 4x log 2 plus log 2. Now let's combine our like terms. So everything that has a variable on it will move to the left, and everything that doesn't have a variable will shift over to the right. So let's subtract 4x log 2 from both sides. We'll have 5x log 3 minus 4x log 2 minus 6 log 3 equals log 2. Let's add that 6 log 3 to both sides. We'll have 5x log 3 minus 4x log 2 on the left equals log 2 plus 6 log 3 on the right. On the left-hand side, notice that x is being multiplied by both of these log terms. We can factor out that x. The first term will be 5 log 3 minus the second term 4 log 2. And everything on the right stays the same. 
Now we have x times something, so we can divide both sides by everything in the parentheses, and that will isolate our x. So we're going to divide both sides by this 5 log 3 minus 4 log 2. So we have x isolated on the left, and our final answer is log 2 plus 6 log 3 over 5 log 3 minus 4 log 2. And remember, you want to put that in as a solution set. And that says that this is the solution for our variable x. One more example. Here we have an application example. And we're using this equation, a equals p times 1 plus r over n raised to the power of nt to determine how long it will take $8,000 compounded monthly at 6% to double. And we're going to round our answer to one decimal place. So first, we want to identify all of our variables. So 8,000 is the principal. It's how much money we're putting in. Compounded monthly tells us that n is going to equal 12. 6% is going to be our r, and remember that's as a decimal, so 0 0.06. Double, so we're trying to find out how much time to double our money. So a would need to be double what we put in, double 8,000, so a would be 16,000. And what are we trying to find? How long? That's our question. Our variable then is t, the time. So let's substitute all of these into that given equation. We have 16,000 equals 8,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12, all to the power of 12t. We can simplify what's in the parentheses here. 0 0.06 divided by 12 is 0 0.005. We can still simplify inside the parentheses because 1 plus 0 0.005 is 1.005. 1 OK. So notice that we have an exponent here. We have 1.005 to the power of 12t. So we're going to proceed just like we did in all of the previous examples. We need to isolate that exponent. So divide both sides by that 8,000. We get 2 equals 1.005 to the power of 12t. Now that we have our exponent isolated, we can take the log of both sides. Log of 2 equals the log of 1.005 to the power of 12t. Use that power rule on the right-hand side. So the left stays the same. 12t gets multiplied by the log of our base. And now, remember, we're trying to isolate this t here. t is being multiplied, so we can divide everything else that's being multiplied with it. So we're going to divide by 12 and log of 1.005. And we need to do that on both sides. So we get t equals log 2 divided by 12 log 1.005. We need to find time or years rounded to one decimal place. Um, do you know the log of 2 or the log of 1.005? I know I don't, so we're going to use our calculator. To do that, we're going to enter log of 2 
and then we need to divide. Now I like to put parentheses in here because I want to make sure that I'm dividing by 12 times the log of 1.005. Close the parentheses for the log, close the parentheses that we put for the denominator, hit enter, and we get 11.58, which we have to round to one decimal place. So this is approximately equal to 11.6. And remember, we're talking years. So it will take 11.6 years for $8,000 to double at 6% interest rate. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you'll go check out some of my other math videos.